I get a lot of crap for being a carnivore, right? A carnivore, basically, to explain that, is a person who eats meat and animal products as his diet. And so, understandably, I annoy a lot of vegans that I come across in parties and meeting places here and there. For example, I was traveling recently and I stayed at a hostel and it's a social place. And so I talked to a lot of vegans and they're not so shy about telling me that my behavior is morally reprehensible, that apparently I'm ruining the world because of this kind of diet, right? I was kind of joking, going back and forth about it, but they seemed to be, you know, they knew what they believed in and they may not have been so like upfront about it, but I got the message about what they were saying, right? And so today I want to break down my arguments that I've had recently and especially for myself because I want to remind myself why I don't think that being a carnivore is any worse than being a vegan or any other diet that matter, for that matter, right? So the three main arguments that vegans give me, right? So vegans here, right? So today I'll talk about just between like veganism and like a, you know, plant and the rest of the stuff kind of based diet and carnivore, right? Eating animal products, right? So number one is the environment. Environment. I'll just say enviro. Number two is the ethical argument. So this is to do with like, you know, cruelty to animals, stuff like that. And then three is the health argument, right? And I'll tell you what the data is. I don't like talking about data too much because it's not... My philosophy with making videos and content is to do more inspiration than information, if that makes sense. But they kind of feed into each other a little bit. So I have to talk about information, at least in part. Data is my least favorite way to kind of like break things down because it doesn't really communicate the inspirational message that I want to communicate. But sometimes I have to talk about data. So bear with me for that. There's data in all of these that are relevant so I'll break it down when it comes to that. First, the environmental factors, right? There is a lot that vegans get incorrect about this, or maybe they are mistaken about what the facts even mean, right? So let me just break that down first of all, the environmental factors. There's a lot to break down here, so I'll, I'll break it down piece by piece. I don't imagine this will be a long video, but I will try and make it as concise as I possibly can so you can go away if you want to, you know, bolster your arguments about eating animal foods and if you are a carnivore i know a lot of you guys who watch my videos are carnivore uh you can have your arguments lined out in this video and you can just show it to people just like that i can imagine just me being on a phone screen um rattling off the arguments against you know veganism and why people should be able to eat meat so the environmental argument so with the environmental argument there's three main kind of prongs to this like a fork right the first is the methane argument, right? Methane, right? Cows that live and breathe and burp. How do you draw a cow? I'm just going to draw it like that. They burp methane, right, in there. And the chemical formula is CH4, if you didn't know that, right? That is what goes into the atmosphere and it causes greenhouse gases. And that is bad, right? This is what the vegans say. This is what vegans tell us. And that is, you know so bad for the planet, right? And that's why you shouldn't eat meat. Well, here's the thing. So I have a list of facts here on my phone in front of me. I'm just going to list them off one by one, okay? If the entirety of the US went vegan, right? If the entirety of the US went vegan, the total emissions that would be reduced would be 2%. A 2% reduction in emissions. Very, very small in the grand scheme of things, right? Secondly, Methane is part of a natural cycle that animals have gone through for millennia, right? We haven't changed that about anything. Ancient ruminants, so like ancient like bison and things like that, they would have done the exact same thing as the cows do these days. And the amounts that they do is comparable to the amounts that we have today, right? It's the same. In fact, I can explain this natural cycle because plants, this is how the cycle of carbon works, right? So we have grass that grows in the ground that cows eat, and there's carbon stored in that grass. Where does that carbon come from? It comes from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So carbon dioxide comes from the atmosphere, stored in glucose in the grass, in terms of like the fiber and the material, cellulose, things like this. The cow comes along and eats that, 
let's draw the cow again and then it turns into methane right which breaks down naturally in the atmosphere over a period of time in so becoming carbon dioxide and water that also helps to feed the grass right this is a cycle that happens naturally over time and it's been going on for thousands of years and it's not something new that we've introduced into the environment right something new that we've introduced into the environment relatively speaking is something like fossil fuels like we're burning that and putting new carbon into the atmosphere that has for a long time been trapped in sources like oil and things like this right that's adding new carbon dioxide into the air meat or the livestock industry doesn't add much in terms of greenhouse gases right it's a cycle okay so it goes back into itself right so like if you want to talk about renewable sources of food cows and livestock are one of the most renewable sources of food and if you still want to argue the fact that methane into the atmosphere is actually really bad and worse than crops in the u.s this is a fact right in the u.s crops the emissions from crops actually exceed the emissions from livestock right so an argument for why veganism is actually worse than livestock in a certain scenario right but beyond that right let's go beyond that okay because food isn't the biggest contributor the production of food isn't the biggest contributor to greenhouse gases it's actually things like power transportation so i'm just gonna draw, gonna draw a, i'm just gonna draw a car here and cement right the stuff we use to build stuff right these contribute to 80 percent of all our emissions okay whereas livestock is four percent a great big distraction from what the real problem is right they seem to want to kind of hide things behind the rug here or hide things behind the curtain or sweep it under the rug right this livestock problem we have with cows yeah sure it can be reduced but let's look at the real issue here and finally food waste right food waste is far greater from non-animal foods than it is from animal foods i've just written food animals so food waste is far greater from non-animal sources than it is from animal sources and food waste actually contributes a lot to greenhouse gases in terms of it's kind of like the process of decomposing this food and kind of getting rid of it it contributes a lot to greenhouse gases so non-animal foods actually affect that a lot more than animal foods plus this food waste can be given to animals right this non-animal food waste can be given and fed to animals that can eat this and turn it into something useful right stuff that we can eat right useful and guess what we do with the 30 percent of inedible plant byproducts that we have from the crops industry right plant byproducts we give them to animals we feed that 37 percent to animals who can use that and provide us with food that we can eat right inedible plant byproducts by the way okay that's why we have to feed them or we can make use of it by feeding them to animals if you want to get rid of that industry say hello to 37 percent of waste in our industry of plant-based food so that's the emissions argument. Let's look at the water argument. You might have often heard, I hear this all the time, it takes like a, a whole swimming pool full of water to get one burger, right? And it's just, it's absurd, right? This argument that we have is based on, <laughs> this is gonna sound so silly, most of this water is rainwater. <laughs> and they're using an argument like that, right? Rainwater that would fall on the ground anyway, right? And guess what happens to rainwater after cows use that from the grass and they drink it from the ground? They urinate it out, right? So the cow drinks that water and it just goes right back into the ground a few hours later, right? And this is what they are <laughs> presuming to be the water usage for animal livestock, right? 95% of it is rainwater. They might need some to top it up, but 95% of it is rainwater. Compare that to crops where up to 70%, no, sorry, not up to, actually 70% of the freshwater reserves that we have go towards crops, 
right? That's not rainwater. That's the, the reserves that we have go towards crops, okay? So compare that to livestock, and I think you'll find that we use way more water for crops than we do for livestock, especially if you look at something like almonds, right? The vegan industry is very heavy on almonds, almond milk, almond, you know, in like baked goods and things like this. I used to eat a lot of almonds in my life, right? I went vegan. I had this kind of diet and I ate loads of nuts, right? Almonds, notoriously famous for causing droughts, a notoriously thirsty plant, a thirsty crop that we use causes droughts in the locations that it's grown, right? Very thirsty. And so this, um, this number is going up due to the popularity of vegan foods, right? So is it animal foods that are causing the problems or is it plant crops, nuts, almonds, things like this? What's really causing the issue? Right, do you see my point here? So the third argument, the land usage. Let me get into this. So let's draw this to start off with. If there were three plots of land to represent all the land that we can use for agricultural purposes on the planet, so basically farmland, right? Two thirds of this land, we can't grow plants there. It's just not usable, right? So no plants here, right? But guess what we can do? We can raise livestock there. So are you saying that we should just waste this land because livestock is bad? Right? You're saying we should waste two-thirds of our entire farming land in the world because you think livestock is bad for the planet. What would be worse? Right? It's such an effective use of the farmland that we have to use livestock. And it would just go to waste if you insist that it is a bad thing for the health of the planet. And another thing about the land, the soil, right? Half of all fertilizers used on the planet, right? Half of all fertilizers, guess what they are? Manure. Half of all fertilizers are manure, right? And manure is basically a fancy term for poop of animals, right? Mainly cow manure, right? And so this is what they use because the truth is crops do a great job of depleting the soil of nutrients and we need cow manure to reintroduce nutrients into the soil right so where crops fail the animal industry the livestock industry has to come in and help out right cows coming to the rescue here but guess what for the cow farms they don't need that right the, the cow farms have their own manure to feed its own industry right? Livestock industry doesn't need any help from the crop industry to kind of help it out, but it will, it will take its leftovers. It will take the iner inedible byproducts of the crops industry and make use of those, but it doesn't need them. In fact, the livestock industry props up the crops industry, right? <laughs> That's the way around it goes. So at the end of this argument, I'm not saying that, look, vegans are bad people or whatever like i think vegans are genuinely mistaken right they misunderstand the facts or they have the wrong facts and they believe somehow that you know veganism is the righteous way to go and that eating meat is bad okay i'm not gonna like say that they are bad people i've had some horrible things said to me but I, i'll you know kind of accept that the fact that they actually believe in it and so okay fine fair enough so I'm not going to argue whether eating meat is bad for the planet or not. I've come to the conclusion, I think we can just clearly see that it isn't, right? So that's not an argument that I'm going to hold any salt to or hold a candle towards, right? Because it's it's just not, it's already a done deal for me. It's not bad for the planet. And that's, that's that. I've done my research. Vegans don't have a leg to stand on with this argument. I won't put this to bed here. But the ethical argument, now you have my attention, okay? There is an ethical argument to veganism that I'm like, okay, you have something to say here. This is actually something I can pay attention to that I might be able to say, okay, I respect that argument. That's that's something that I can, you know, actually say, 
you have a point there. So to do this, we have to talk about the ethics of killing an animal, right? We're holding a knife, getting a cow, killing it for the purposes of eating dinner later with a steak on our plate and all that kind of stuff. The thing is, animals sometimes are predators, right? And so is it wrong for an animal to kill an animal? If we classify ourselves as animals, I think we can do that in this example. Is it wrong, for example, for a lion to hunt down a zebra, right? Would we say that's wrong? We wouldn't really argue the ethical implications of that. So why is it bad for us to kill a cow? Maybe it depends on the way that we kill it. There's more interesting questions to ask here, right? And in my mind, there is a scale to this, right? So let me draw something for you here. So in my kind of conception of things, there are three points on this kind of scale where we can upgrade our ethical kind of, our morality level or whatever, right? So number one is factory farming, right? By far the most popular way to go when it comes to eating meat in general. It's the most common. And I think that a lot of the unnecessary suffering or ethical problems with it we are distanced from and so we're just desensitized to because no sorry not desensitized that's the wrong word we are distanced from it so that we don't really see any of it that's what it is right i'll talk about that in a second upgrading that we get things like organic free range things like this and that tends to be better for the animal because they focus more on giving the animal a happier life and it tends to also be healthier for us as well the final argument here the final kind of place I want to come to is hunting, right? That's the most ethical way that I believe there is of sourcing meat and animal products for us to eat. Because in essence, the animal lives its life completely naturally and it dies relatively peacefully at a gunshot instead of being torn apart by bears and wolves and any natural processes that might take it down, right? Disease and all the horrible things that can happen to it like a deer, for example, and that might seem counterintuitive, but I'll explain that later on. So back to the start, factory farming, okay? I do agree with you vegans, okay? Factory farming is the most common way we get meat, and it is one of the most morally reprehensible ways of getting meat or any animal product, right? The practices used in, in factory farming do have a lot of unnecessary suffering involved with it. That is a fact. I'll give that to you. And it's the most common way we have of doing it because it is by far the most affordable, right? All right, most common, first of all, right? Why is it the most common? Because it's the most affordable and the most accessible as well, right? Because it's everywhere. It's in most convenience stores and things like that, grocery stores, most convenient, right? So I will give it to you vegans. This argument holds pretty well, right? There is unnecessary suffering. And I think fundamentally, in my view, if you can reduce unnecessary suffering, that's better, right? So happy face about this. I think suffering in general is part of life for any creature that lives on this earth, right? It will suffer, right? So it's part of nature. But if we can reduce that suffering, I think it's a good thing, right? So this kind of holds some kind of weight to me. It's like, okay, I get it, vegans. I understand what you're saying when you tell me this stuff, right? But I think throwing out meat in general is throwing out the baby or the bathwater. If you say no to meat in general, that's, I don't think that's a good idea. How about we try to make the problem better or make the the issue less of an issue is what I mean by that, right? So the solution that we can com come up with is to upgrade the level of the quality of the animal's lives. So we come up to things like free range, organic, other words like grass fed, that's one as well. So these list of kind of criteria we can take off with regulations around it, things like that, so that, you know, governments can check for the quality and the actual, the fact that they are actually being raised like this, that makes sure that there's less suffering. 
and that's better that makes me happier right in fact the beef that i eat is entirely grass-fed and i'm pretty sure it's organic as well right and it's free range by default as well right so with that we have an upgrade right that's better even better than this is hunting right and although you might have images in your mind of like bambi being killed or bambi's mother i never watched it as a kid so i don't know what the story is hunting is actually better because instead of natural ways of dying for the deer for example right mauled by bears and wolves it comes to an end pretty peacefully at a gunshot or an arrow shot right we kill it humanely if it's thrashing around we like make sure it dies quickly instead of slowly and we hunt it and kill it and it lasts for a long time because it's a big animal and it feeds us for a long time and we use every part of the animal and we eat every part of the animal like if we're doing it the right way right so hunting for me is the most ideal because the animal gets to live its most natural life right we don't you know interfere with it in any way we just let it live its life and then we kill it and eat it for ourselves the same as it would be in nature if a lion hunted down a zebra or a bison or something like that that would be the same so that for me is the most ethical way i think it reduces the suffering the most right and ends up with a place where i can pretty happily compare my situation to that lion hunting a zebra right whereas some of these previous ones like farming can't really be compared in that way it's kind of different which i i get i understand that right so from an ethical standpoint yes suffering can be decreased and if we do that that's a little bit better than if we just go by the default way and try to like you know <laughs> with companies making only the best thing for money the bottom line being money not the welfare of the animal or the you know the ethical kind of issues here right so i do think suffering is part of life i do think killing and eating an animal is natural part of is a natural part of what you know being an organism on this planet is and therefore it's okay for us to eat animals, but I agree that reducing suffering or unnecessary suffering is a good thing in anyone's eyes. So there's a scale we can move towards and move along towards organic and free range and then towards hunting to be the most ethical in life. So in, in an ideal world, I would hunt all of my meat and bring it to my dinner plate and that's what I would do. And I'm working towards that in my life actually right now, okay? And that is what I think is an ethical way to eat meat if you want to look for a more ethical way to eat meat but the problem is in trying to solve this problem for like the mass population is the fact that these more ethical ways of doing things so organic and free range and hunting it's by definition less convenient and less affordable right it's harder to do these things and so we need some kind of like external intervention into the society that we live in and the the structures that bring us animal products to make sure that they do more of this right i think i think that needs to be some kind of intervention in that kind of way to do that but the best thing you can do right now if you feel in any kind of way that the meat that you eat is unethical just upgrade it right so go towards level two level three towards hunting so to conclude the most popular way that farming is done is not the most ethical, right? It's not the best, right? Especially in my eyes, I believe that to be so. But it is the most affordable, the most uh, available, the most convenient. And so it's kind of like the majority we eat like that. I don't think that's it's a great thing, but that's all I can say about that. The fact that alternative methods do exist and people can choose them. So now the health side, this is the final argument I'm going to go through and this is what I think caps it off really, right? Because a lot of vegans tell us that we're not designed to eat meat in the first place. We are healthier as plant eaters, right? <laughs> and the thing is, once more, vegans are mistaken, sadly mistaken here because the analysis of things like our stomach pH, for example, and the way that our digestive system on a whole is organized right digestive system 
this analysis in a biological sense shows that we are actually quite carnivorous as a species. So I ask the question, are we above nature to kind of like circumvent the fact that we are designed to eat meat? Do we have the kind of like ability to play God and just go beyond what we need in life? And yeah, I'm sure you can point me to plenty of vegans who live to, you know, old ages and they live healthy lives and things like that. But look, just because they're alive doesn't mean they're thriving, right? Surviving is not thriving. Surviving is not equal to thriving, right? Just because they live to that age doesn't mean they live the most healthy life that they can live. And no study has shown that veganism leads to a healthier life, right? Veganism equals healthier. That's not the case. In fact, a lot of vegans face a lot of malnutrition problems and end up having to quit veganism, right? Veganism has a very, very high percentage dropout rate, right? I think it's as, as high as 80%. I'm not sure about that one. You'd have to check that. But I think it's around 80%. People drop out of veganism, right? And pursue other diets or just quit dieting altogether. That's how much it is, right? Because it <laughs> inherently, like it, you can see by what veganism is, like what foods you can have access to, the fact that you can't get all the nutrients you can you need in life from plants. You just can't, right? In fact, if I had to draw like a Venn diagram of the nutrients that we need in life, I would say that plant matter can represent in this circle and the stuff that we can get from animal products is this circle. So as you can see, anything we can get from animals are found in plants, but the stuff that's found in plants aren't you know, inclusive of the stuff we need from the animal kingdom, right? So this nutrients, we're missing out on all of that if we're going to go vegan, right? This is stuff that we need. We need this stuff, right? This is the new. This this whole thing is the nutrients that we need as human beings, right? Human beings need this, and that's all I need to say, really. Like, I don't think I need to draw any more or explain any more. That's why veganism doesn't work as like a health thing, right? That's why vegans are malnourished. Like, honestly, if you're a vegan, good luck because you're not going to get all the food that you need in life to thrive in life. So I believe that covers things. So what we went through today was the arguments as to why I think that eating meat is no less a bad thing in general than veganism, right? Because of the environmental factors, it's just purely not an argument because a lot of the facts are misconstrued or mistakenly argued in a certain direction but the truth is the livestock industry has a very minimal impact on the environment and actually helps us out a lot right so that's the environmental pillar broken right and then there was the what was it the ethical side which i have a little bit of a, a space in my heart for because i understand that you know in my life, especially, I want to help people out. And so what that is essentially is reducing suffering. So wherever there's unnecessary suffering, to reduce that is a good thing, right? So there's a tick for me from vegans there. We can do better, right? We can do better. But I don't see that as a reason to throw out the baby with the bathwater with all meat, right? We can keep meat around and try and move towards a space where we are better with the stuff that we do with animal products, right? So fair enough, but there's stuff we can do, right? We have options. We don't have to all go vegan and like change our entire lives to be malnourished for that. And that brings me to the health side in which I discussed and showed very clearly the fact that vegans are indeed malnourished and it's, it is possible to survive just about you'd have to really pay attention and really, really supplement with like all these kind of synthetic fake supplements and things like this. And to be honest with you, most people don't. And so most people are malnourished. So that concludes with the fact that health is much easier. Better health is much easier to obtain through the use of animal products, right? So with these three arguments, I conclude the fact that the carnivore diet is not a evil in the world. It's not bad for the environment. It perhaps might have some ethical issues with it. And on the health side, it is fundamentally better than veganism, right? So with that being said, those are my arguments. 
I hope that hasn't offended you too much. And thank you so much for watching till the end of this video, especially if you're a vegan. I appreciate that, that you haven't just gone straight to the comments and just angrily said something to me or to people in general about this. Thank you for listening genuinely. I have no hard feelings at all against you guys. I think that you're trying to do something good in the world in terms of focusing on food and trying to eat better. That's great. You might be mistaken about a few things, so like I'm not going to blame you for that. But try and reconsider and have an open mind about these things as anyone should and do different things. I was once a vegan in my life. I tried different diets and finally landed on carnivore. And so that's what happened to me. But it's up to you what choice you make in life. And I hope I've convinced you and at least armed you with the right information in this video to make a choice of your own. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. Cheers. Take care.